Hey guys, John here from John's DIY Playground. Uh, today we're going to build a carbon monoxide detector that has some uh, ability to push out alerts to our cell phones using if this then that. Uh, a lot of times now you're seeing these carbon monoxide stories, the cars these days are idling so quietly. A lot of people are leaving them idling in their garages and when that happens, if you have an attached garage, you can actually get very sick or die from carbon monoxide seeping into your house. So. The idea is we're going to make our own sensor. Um, it's always good to have a great store-bought sensor somewhere else in your house, but this one we'll design to actually push alerts out and I'll show us a quick diagram of how we're going to do that. So here's the system diagram of what we're going to do today and we've got our particle photon as the device we're going to use. It's a Wi-Fi enabled Internet of Things device hooked to a carbon monoxide sensor called MQ-9. Um, that will send data up to the particle internet server uh, cloud service and then uh, if this then that service will be watching for alerts and then send a alert to our cell phone if the gas level goes too high. Now this is a little more smart sensor like compared to a, a, a typical monoxide sensor that just beeps. So for example if you're in another room you won't hear the monoxide sensor beep or if you're hard of hearing you might not have that but if you're always checking your phone we can set this up to send alerts like every 30 seconds and then you'll be able to see that the carbon monoxide detectors found that uh, levels are getting too high and unsafe and then you should check the garage. Now a quick shameless plug here for my channel. If you do visit uh, YouTube and go to slash C slash John's DIY Playground, take a look through my videos. If you're interested in learning a lot more detail about the particle photon and how to use if this then that and setting it all up, there's a lot more detail in these two tutorials you'll find in my uploads, so take a look at those. For this project, I picked up the Sane Smart uh, Carbon Monoxide MQ9 sensor from Amazon. And uh, this hookup is going to be very simple. We're just going to take the analog out and put that to A0, uh, hook the ground to ground, and the V actually to the V in instead of 3.3. It does need a 5 volt source, so by uh, tapping in with our 5 volt USB input here for power, we'll get 5 volts right here to feed to the sensor. Here's a look at the code I came up with for this project. It's very simple. Um, I actually discovered a similar project on uh, Hackster here and a gentleman Stefan G posted a nice write-up on his uh, project also using the particle but he was using an MQ4 sensor for uh, detecting methane gas and natural gas he also found it detects uh, CO2 high levels uh, nice write-up there so I put that inside my code here um, took a little bit of his code and adapted it for mine um, I'll put this code up on my github site and uh, just to kind of quickly go over it, we're um, going to be um, starting the, the main loop by warming up the sensor as specified. They want this thing to heat up for days. So um, I have two bits of code in here. I was testing with just a five second delay, but really you're supposed to let it heat up uh, and warm up the sensor for two days. So that's this one billion sec, uh, milliseconds. And then it uh, goes into the main loop and you'll have to take a look at this sensor value 750. Um, you may have to adjust that to a higher or lower value depending on what your sensor sensitivity is set like. Um, what I do is <clears throat> have two methods of doing troubleshooting and um, debugging. You can use particle publish and send the particle publish numbers up to the uh, particle cloud and use the dashboard there. The other way is by using a USB, just plug in your computer and see messages that way. Um, but the choice is yours. One uh, a bit of advice I can give you is the USB cable. Some of them are power only and don't really have the data lines. So if you're having trouble on your Windows machine with uh, seeing your particle photon, check that you have a, a good quality USB cable. Let's try using some other USB cables. The other thing I found is with the particle dashboard that receives these particle publishes, um, I was having problems with the Internet Explorer browser, so I was having a lot better success with Chrome, so I recommend using Chrome as your browser if you're going to be looking at the uh, particle dashboard. So just to wrap things up, let's give you a look at the hardware and uh, show you the thing in operation. Here's our finished product before I go and put it into this uh, very small snap together case but um, on the breadboard it's working well you've got your particle photon here um, again only three connections to it you got the VN and the ground and then the A0 connection going to this MQ9 sensor um, I did not touch the uh, potentiometer that's in the, the front here for tuning um, 
it was pretty much middle of the road in the values, so I didn't need to mess with that at all. Also, if you notice in the first uh, line, few lines of my code, I had a, uh, a line to enable external antenna. So I'm using a UFL connector here um, to plug into an external antenna, which happens to be like a uh, PC board based kind of antenna, but it's a little better than the onboard chip antenna here. If you need that kind of range, just be aware that that's available. If not, then just uncomment or um, comment that line of code out in the uh, in the first few lines of the code. You'll see it. So that's how it works. Um, if you need help with the MQTT part, um, the um, I'm sorry, the if this then that part of it, um, I'll provide a link in my description below to show the details of me uh, demonstrating if this then that, and that's how you push the alerts onto your phone. Um, hope you learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. This is John. Have a great day. John's DIY Playground.